Thanks for tuning in to our bonus episode preview. This is just a short sample of this week's exclusive Patreon episode. You can hear the episode in its entirety by becoming a member at patreon.com slash indoctrination, where you'll gain access to all of our exclusive episodes and merchandise. Hi, everyone. This is a bonus episode just for you, for the Patreon subscribers, for the people who I'm so honored to be able to say help support this show. Thank you really for your enduring support. It is something really imperative, really necessary to keep this show on the air and to keep it going. And so I am truly happy to be able to offer gifts to you. And I wanted to be able to put together another bonus episode for you about something that I've noticed quite a bit in doing the work that I do. We talk a lot about the shift in language that happens within cultic systems, within controlled systems, where there is a certain lingo, there is, like some of you have heard, the whole Scientology dictionary that is huge. It is huge. It is the size of the Webster's Dictionary. And it's all filled with Scientology terms and acronyms and things that are sort of English but not English and words that are redefined and translated in other ways into kind of Scientology definitions. After becoming sessionable, I followed the grade chart to go up the bridge through auditing, reaching OT7, I'm becoming cause of her life, despite stops and arbitraries. The sentence means little to you or to me, but for members of the Church of Scientology, language like that is commonplace. In fact, they have thousands upon thousands of unique terms and definitions. It is quite trippy to read through all of it. And there are a lot of people who will say I was raised in an environment that had its own way of talking. I was raised in a group or a family where we had our own way of relating to people, our own way of relating to each other. And it was only after going into the real world, so to speak, that I found that it was a very peculiar way of communicating. And it really separated us from other people. There are a lot of people, too who will be so bogged down by needing to memorize certain terminology or quotes, whole paragraphs of teachings, and they are like a word salad. They're not really English in the way we know English, or they're not really any language. And a lot of these are translated into other languages if the group meets in other places or the families from another place. But still, It doesn't come together in any cohesive form. It doesn't make sense. And there is this notion that some people have that if something doesn't make sense, it must be that it is of some higher teaching. It's of some higher level. And a person who runs a cultic group will often have teachings that don't quite make sense. And sometimes it's because they really are unhinged and they really don't know how to make sense. And in their mind, they don't make sense of things. And so what you're hearing come out of their mouth or what you're seeing in their writing is really their jumbled way of thinking. But for other people, they're just coming up with a lot of terminology so that you feel You have to work harder to get it. And they will, of course, have a way of making you feel bad that you're not getting it. It's because you're not enlightened enough or you're not trying hard enough or you haven't paid enough money to be able to get it. And some of them are also bold enough to have courses that will help to decipher these teachings. And what I've noticed time and time again from people who say they signed up for the workshop or they signed up for whatever it was to be able to understand the teaching, by the end of that workshop, it was still unclear. They were no closer to finding out what these teachings meant because they really don't mean anything. But they were made to feel bad that here they had gone for a whole weekend and they still weren't getting it, well, then that just meant they had to sign up for another weekend, which was going to cost more. And so if you don't understand what you're being taught, 
And you say to the person, can you translate this for me? And their translation still doesn't quite make sense. Don't automatically assume it's because you're not smart enough to get it. Don't automatically assume it's because you're not enlightened enough to get it or you're not open enough to getting it. It could be that no amount of education, no amount of logic, no amount of translation would make it make sense. Controlling people's language in order to control their behavior is really such a clever tactic because language is usually the first thing people adopt and the last thing they're willing to let go, right? So like, unlike shaving your head or even changing your clothes or moving to a remote commune, but over time, the language just sort of infiltrates and language is something that we take for granted because we pick it up so naturally. Like human beings are so accommodating with language. Thank you.